This demonstration we're going to look at how we can create and manage user mailboxes in Exchange Server 2016. So the first thing we've done here is we've just come into our Exchange Admin Center, we're on the Recipients node, and in order to create a new user mailbox, all we need to do is click on the plus button. And what we're going to do here is we're going to create a user mailbox. This will then bring us into Wizard. So within the Wizard, we then need to start filling out some information relating to our user. So what I'm going to do at this point here is I'm just going to start filling out some of the information. So I've done at this point here, alias is going to be Alice. New user, Alice, last name Siku, Alice Siku, and then if we scroll down a bit, that fills in the name. We're going to put her into the research department. We're going to give her user login name of alice.adam.com, and I've filled in the password and also confirm the password as well. Probably get the user to require password change at next logon, but this is a lab environment, so I'm not going to bother too much. Then what we'll do is we'll select more options. And under more options at this point here, we'll just browse through and specify the mailbox database for this user. And all I'm going to do at this point here is put it on the mailbox database on LON EX2 and select OK. And then what we'll do is we'll select save and we'll leave this to create the user. Now the user's created, we'll just highlight the edit button just so we can have a look at the options associated with the user. So on the general page, just general information relating to um, our user Alice. So if we have a look down here, if we click on more options, we can see exactly where the user is located, which mailbox database, specify any custom attributes, but it is just general information relating to the user. If we click mailbox usage, what we can see here is we can see the mailbox usage for this user. And as we've just created the user, the user's never logged on, so we don't get any information, so we'll just select OK. Contact information is the contact information relating to the user. So, for example, what we could do at this point here is under City, let's stick it in Newcastle. Organization information, so title will be at this point here, research, user, and department can be research and so on through all the information. Under the email address, you can see which email address has been generated for our user based off the email address policy. Have a look at any mailbox features enabled or disabled for the user. And we could enable or disable those features as well. What we can also do as well is have a look at any groups that Alice is a member of. Have a look at the mail tip. So the mail tip is something that will pop up when somebody tries to send an email to our user. And then under mailbox delegation, we can have a look at any delegated permissions for this user account as well. Now I have modified some things, but I'm not going to bother saving them off, I'll just select cancel. Now as Alice was just a temporary user in our organization, she's now left the organization. So one of the things we can also do as well is we can also delete user mailboxes. So are we sure we want to delete Alice? Yes, we are. Say yes at this point here, and Alice now disappears. Now, not only has that deleted the mailbox, it has also deleted the user as well. So another thing we can do is we can also disable users. The reason we want to do this is maybe the user's going on sabbatical, maybe the user's going on leave of absence. What we don't want to do is have this user account enabled. That could be uh, quite bad for security purposes. So what we're going to do here is we're just going to have a look down here. And what we're going to do is we're just going to go to Alex. And within here, what we're going to do with Alex is we're now going to just disable Alex. And in order to disable a user, we just highlight the more options. And what we do is we click disable. Are we sure we want to disable Alex? Yes, we are. So we'll just say yes at this point here. And we've now disabled Alex's mailbox. So as we can see, Alex has now disappeared from the list. But one of the things is, if we went to Active Direct users and computers, we'd notice that Alex's account still exists. We've just purely disabled his mailbox. And anything we can do in the Exchange Admin Center, we can also do as well through the Exchange Management Shell. So if we just go to the Exchange Management Shell, one of the things we'll do here is we'll just re-enable uh, user account Alex. Now what we'll do at this point here is we'll just enable hyphen mailbox, hyphen identity, Alex, hyphen database, and research mailbox, and then database one. So as you can see, we've re-enabled that account. The other thing we're going to do at this point as well is what we'll do is we'll get all of the users and organizational unit development. And what we'll do is we'll enable their mailboxes on database mailbox database one. 
And we'll do that by issuing get hyphen user hyphen organizational unit, and that's going to be development. We're going to find all of the users in that organizational unit. We'll then pipe that out and we'll enable mailbox databases on database one. Now what we can see now, it's now created those user mailboxes from the existing users in the development OU. So as we can see, the Exchange Management Shell is really useful for both tasks, whereas the Exchange Admin Center can be used for single individual tasks. Just minimize this down. We'll just give this a quick refresh. Now what we should see is we've now got a list of those users. And that's the end of this demonstration. Thank you.